So um, although yoga is brilliant in pregnancy, there are some moves that aren't beneficial when you have SPD. The movements that kind of really open up the hips or standing on one leg, putting pressure onto one side of the pelvis, uh, anything wide legged. So that's why I've decided to do this video today because yoga can be really beneficial for SPD, but only if you're going to a class where the teacher really knows what she's doing and she's going to um, modify correctly for SPD. So this video is safe to do for anyone with SPD or pelvic girdle pain, but it will benefit anyone who's pregnant in the second or third trimester because it's all about stabilizing the muscles around the hips and pelvis to create that stability so that you do not feel so unstable and therefore you don't have as much pain. So it's not going to correct um, the overstretched ligaments, but it's going to help to support them uh, and to support the whole area. So uh, you will need a ball for this, but if you don't have a ball, um, you can use a chair for now. If you don't have a ball, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you get one because it's the best buy you'll ever, it's the best thing you'll ever buy in your pregnancy. Um, they're cheap, they're only around 10 or 15 uh, euro and um, they're just fantastic for sitting on. They're so much more comfortable, they align you uh, properly um, and you can do your exercises on them, you can just sit on them or and you can use them in labour as well. Uh, more on that in another video. Uh, so we are going to use this today. Just make sure that you get one that's correct for your height. So your hips should be a little bit higher than your knees. You should be able to firmly plant your feet on the floor. So uh, you're going to also need a belt as well. So I have a yoga belt here. Of course, you don't have to have a yoga belt. Just any old belt that you have lying around your house is fine. And if you do happen to have a yoga block, great. We'll use that in one of the poses. If you don't have a yoga block, you could use a thick book. If that doesn't work, you can do the pose without it as well. So don't worry too much about that. So we're going to start on our ball, feet firmly planted on the floor. And we're just going to begin by um, stretching the upper body a little bit. So bring your hands, clasp your fingers together, push your palms away, and then slowly on an inhale, raise your arms up, not over your head, uh, but just in front of your head. So you want to keep the shoulders, the head of your arm bones, like feeling like they're right in the socket. So you don't want to feel like your shoulders are up here at your ears. So drop them down into their sockets. You want to keep your uh, pelvis and your rib cage uh, in the neutral alignment. So the ribs should be neutrally stacked over the pelvis. So we don't want to start overextending the back and uh, flaring out the ribs here. So that's why I say bring the arms just over the head or in front of the head rather than over the head. Once all of that is sorted, then you can look up if it's comfortable on your neck and take about three more deep breaths, inhaling to lengthen. And exhaling to soften, exhaling through the mouth. Inhaling, stretch. Exhaling, soften. One more time, inhale. And as you exhale, gently release your hands and let them come all the way down. So we're gonna move then into some uh, seated pelvic circles. So uh, just as it sounds, you're just going to circle your hips, your pelvis around. So the movement is radiating from here, from the hips. And the rest of your body can just intuitively move whatever feels nice and comfortable. So connecting with your breath here again, inhaling and exhaling as you move around. So it can be a little noisy, but it's worth it. So this um, frees up a bit of tension from the hips, the pelvis and the lower back. So one more circle this way and then reverse. Same movement, opposite direction. So with the breathing in yoga, especially pregnancy yoga, I always recommend that you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and that you make sure you fully exhale without force but fully exhale before you begin the next inhale okay i'm back to neutral so we've loosened up the hips and the pelvis a little bit now and we're going to um, try and strengthen the inner thighs here so 
Uh, I spoke about the inner thighs. This can affect down into the inner thighs. So strengthening them can really help. So very simply, you just bring your um, feet hip width distance apart or maybe a little bit wider. And then you bring one fist. Actually, you might need to bring the feet in closer for the first one. You bring one fist between your legs here. And, and then you just you try and squeeze the thighs together. And we're going to take about 10 breaths here. So keeping the thighs activated and squeezed. Your, um, your fist gives that feedback, that resistance that the thighs need, the inner thigh muscles to engage. So just keep breathing here. Keep squeezing. If you feel a small little click or a little movement in here and it's not painful, that should be fine. But if you feel any pain, just back off until it feels a little better. You just use those signals that your body is giving you to know whether um, you should need to back off or not. Two more breaths if you can manage it. And exhale and release. And then as you get a little bit stronger, you, or even straight away you might find it's okay, you start to squeeze in using two fists. So if possible, you're going to do about 10 breaths here. And if not, you can go back to the first version until you feel a bit stronger. Keep that squeeze. Check your jaw though. Make sure your jaw is nice and relaxed here. One more breath. And release. Okay, so we're going to move our ball out of the way for now. And we're going to stand up and do some standing hip circles. So also um, quite nice when you've got SPD pain and quite releasing for this whole area. So feet hip width distance apart. Soften your knees as much as you need now to feel fluid in the hips and lower back as you move around. Again, very simply, just circling the hips. Inhaling and exhaling as you go around. So the main thing is that you're keeping a good um, a bit of weight down into each foot here. You're not letting any of the toes lift so you feel nice and stable. If you need to go a little bit wider, you can go a little bit wider. With the feet, I mean. It's a nice, big circle. But again, moving intuitively modifying if needed and then back the other direction you could even put on some music at home and do your hip circles it can be quite nice okay and back to neutral Okay, so we're going to do um, a standing pelvic tilt. I'm going to move sideways so you can see this a little bit better. Your feet are still hip width distance apart. Your hands start on your hips. And you're going to soften the knees a little. And then as you exhale, you're going to tilt your pelvis back. And with that, you're hugging your baby in a little bit. Your chin comes to your chest. And there's a little bit of a rounding in the spine. So it's a nice stretch for the back as well. And then as you inhale, you come back to neutral and maybe arch the upper back a little bit. Let the shoulders come back, broadening across the chest. So it's exhale and inhale. When we inhale, we're not, in, we're not going too deeply into this um, uh, lower back extension. We don't want to overdo that, especially if you feel any pain there. So exhale. And inhale. And then we bring the arms in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. So this pose strengthens um, between your thighs. It strengthens your pelvic floor, the glutes, the core muscles, all of those muscles that help to stabilize the hips. So it is a fantastic pose.
for FPD and pelvic girdle pain. Then I'm going to do a couple more poses after this that sort of um, increase the level of intensity but similar kind of action. Do one more. So if at any point the intensity gets too much, you can just back off a little bit, do the previous pose until you feel strong enough to go forward. So the next one we're going to do is the chair squat. This is the one I was saying that if you have a block, you can use it to get that extra bit of feedback between your thighs or a nice thick um, book. Or you can just do it without the block. You'll still get um, the, the, a good workout with it. So uh, I'm going to again stand sideways just so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to um, inhale, and as you inhale, bend your knees. So no, no matter what's between your legs, you need to make sure your knees and, and ankles are in line. So um, if you're squeezing in the block and you find your knees are knocking in, you might need to bring your feet in a little bit. But try and have something that's wide enough that your knees aren't too close together. So inhale. And exhale. So you can see here my feet are firmly planted. I don't feel unbalanced as I go down. So you need to balance the knees going forward and the butt going back. And you need to um, keep the spine in a nice neutral alignment. So there's no tuck in the tailbone under a rounding. There's also no overarching in the lower back. Just nice neutral spine. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Two more. And then if you feel up to it, you can hold this one for about three breaths. So by now, you should really be feeling that in the glutes and in the thighs maybe as well. Okay, so we're going to release um, the block and you're going to come to a wall. So we're going to do chair pose against the wall with the pelvic tilt in it as well. So uh, if you're on a floor and you're not on your mat for this, just make sure that you are um, in bare feet. It's better to do yoga in bare feet anyway, but just um, you don't want to be slipping around on the floor. So uh, you're going to bring your feet forward enough that you can bend. Now, how deeply you bend is obviously going to affect how intense this pose is. So when you're starting off, this is probably enough. You could go down further and further, depending on how much work you want to do. You could go legs parallel to the floor. And then um, you can start with your hands on your hips here. Actually, we could just even leave them on the hips or like even cupping your um, baby bump. And we're going to exhale, bringing the lower back into the uh, wall for a pelvic tilt. And you can look down and then inhale to move away from the wall again, tilting the pelvis forward again. Exhale. Inhale. And as we continue with these, if you find the level of intensity in the legs is too much, uh, you can come up a little bit, and if you want a bit more challenge, then you just adjust, bend the knees more. The more you bend the knees, the more you have to walk the feet away from the wall so that your knees aren't un under any pressure, they're not going too far forward over the ankles. It's going to strengthen all of your thighs, all of your bum. Again, it's great for the pelvic floor and the core muscles, all of those groups of muscles that we want to bring balance to. We'll go for two more. Last one. And then just using your hands to bring you away from the wall nice and carefully. Okay. So we're going to do a right angle wall stretch, which is a great pregnancy yoga alternative to downward dog and something that can feel really nice with SPD as well. So you can start off near the wall with your feet hip distance apart. Bring your hands onto the wall. Bend your knees as much as you need to, coming in and out of this pose in particular. 
and then just start to walk your feet back and your hands down at the same time so you're bringing your body into a right angle and then you don't want to walk the feet too far back like you don't want to have your feet back here and you can't actually get your um, hips in line with your ankles so bring your ankles in under your hips keep the hands glued to the wall and also make sure you haven't gone like really far down with the hands or they aren't like re still really far up your ears and your hand and your arms should be in line so you're looking straight down ears and hands in the line and then imagine when someone has their hands on your hips and they're pulling your hips away from the wall and at the same time you're trying to your hands are glued to the wall so you're getting that nice bit of length now if you can if it feels good you can straighten the legs um, with SPD you might be better off keeping a little bend in the knees or even a big bend in the knees whatever you feel you need with each inhale feel your spine getting longer and longer feel that lovely stretch and release in the lower back so if you're rounding like this you're not going to get that um, stretch you're not going to get that release also if you're just dropping down into the lower back too much that's not going to feel good either so aim for that neutral spine two or three more breaths here and then to come back out you can bend the knees if they weren't already bent keep the hands on the wall and start to walk your feet in and then start to walk your hands up the wall so you're fully supported by the wall until you get upright again okay perfect we're going to come down onto the mat now and do cat pose so cat is a fantastic stretch that's completely safe to do with pelvic girdle pain of all types and it helps stretch out the lower back the glutes and all of your spine and it's good for um, maintaining some uh, core work as well nice gentle safe core work so i would recommend you do this every day i'd recommend you do the video every day but in particular um this cat stretch so start with your um, gaze just down between your hands, your fingers uh, spread out, your wrists under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. And then as you exhale, round your spine and give your baby a little hug in as you bring your chin to your chest, looking down towards your baby. Stretching out from the neck to the tailbone. Inhale, back to neutral. And just keep going with your breath. We'll go for three more. Last one. Okay, and then we're going to come into knees to chest, which is a great alternative to child's pose, which might not feel comfortable because you won't want to be um, bringing your knees wide apart when you have SPD. So instead, you can bring your forearms to the mat, bring the palms of your hands together, or just clasp your hands together, and just drop your head down, and feel that nice uh, stretch on your lower back. If you need to walk your knees back a little bit, you can, but you're keeping your knees in close together, just a, an inch or two separating them. And take a few breaths here. This can be a great labour position. You can also just drape yourself over your ball as well if you have your ball handy. Okay. We're going to move now into a hero pose. So hero pose is um, a great stretch for the legs, brilliant for the circulation and a really um, soothing pose for SPD as well. If you um, have, happen to have a bolster, it's ideal. Um, and if not, as most people, um, just use a couple of cushions instead. So sorry, I should have mentioned that you need cushions at the beginning of the video. You can always pause it up and go off and get yourself a couple of cushions or a couple of pillows. And then uh, to come into the pose, uh, bring your knees they don't have to come together and they probably won't come fully together but just close together no wider than the hip distance apart and place as many cushions as you need behind you 
and I tend to like you can bunch them up like this to give you a bit more height if you're stiff especially in your feet you will really feel this and you'll need a lot of height so you want to feel something in the stretch but you don't want to be sitting there in agony so just take the time to use to, to find the right amount of um, propping underneath you and then once you have enough you can come into the pose so this is actually you're sitting you're, you're not sitting on your heels your heels here are beside your hips so you're really stretching out the fronts of your feet the fronts of your um, lower legs the knees and the quads and because you've got that inward rotation of the hip bones the femurs um, and the hips it's soothing for the pubis symphysis bone here so while we're here we're going to do um, some stretching through the arms if you have your belt handy you can use this on, you can use your belt on this one as well so you're going to bring your right arm up straight up and bring your left arm out to the side turn your left uh, palm to touch to face the wall behind you and then bend both elbows so if you're flexible you can wiggle and you be able to join your hands behind your back so most of us have one side that's harder than the other this side is my harder side but i find in my classes most people's harder side is the other side so i seem to be a bit different to most people in that way so you might find that this side is a little bit easier than the other side so just take two or three breaths be careful not to um, thrust out your ribs here and what I was saying about the belt is if the hands don't uh, meet uh, behind you you can throw the belt over and then you'll be able to hold on to the belt with both hands and walk the hands as close as you can get them then using the belt for a bit of resistance so try not to flare out the ribs keep them stacked over your pelvis and take two or three more breaths And then exhale and gently release. And then we move to the other side. So you're going to inhale, bring your left arm up, your right arm out to the side, turn that right palm to face the wall behind you, bend both elbows and wiggle around a little bit if you need to, to hold hands or use the belt behind your back. Everything is stacked neutrally, pelvis, rib cage, head. Just focusing on the breath. This can be a nice stretch for um, the arms, the upper back, the shoulders. And you're probably starting to feel it quite a bit in the legs here as well. So just a couple more breaths. great so we are going to do a pose next called staff pose so it can be a bit tricky getting out of this one if your legs are very stiff so just take it nice and gentle come forward onto your hands and then stretch out one leg behind you just giving the blood a chance to rush back into the joints and then stretch out the other leg so as i mentioned this is actually really good for your circulation as well in your legs so if you've got tired stiff or swollen legs that's going to be helpful so for this next pose we're going to use uh, at least one cushion but you could use two you want a little bit of height in your hips so uh, we're going to sit up on the cushion for that bit of height if you have a bolster at home you could sit on the bolster if it's not too high and bring the legs straight out in front so this again is for activation of the thigh muscles and also it's going to work the core muscles and the lower back but in a nice safe way so you want to keep your feet flexed pointing back towards your toes pointing back towards yourself and if you can engage through your legs here uh, your leg muscles and um, feel uh, that engagement of the kneecaps lifting up into the quads into the thigh muscles make sure you've moved the flesh of your bum back so you're really rooting down through your sit bones and then just place your hands uh, on the floor beside you just gently here 
and keep your gaze down towards your feet and you're trying to create a nice L shape you don't want to be just kind of slouching or hanging out here and that is not the pose and you're not going to get the benefits that way if you really find it very difficult to sit straight up like this and um, more height and if that still doesn't work then bend the knees a little bit but if you really want to get the thigh engagement you need the, the legs to be straight two or three more breaths Okay, and then take your belt again, as I said, any old belt that you might have in your wardrobe. It doesn't have to be a fancy yoga belt. Um, and just bring it around the, just, uh, just under the balls of your feet here. And we're going to do, normally in pregnancy yoga uh, class, we do a wide leg forward bend so that we have lots of nice space for baby. But because we don't want to bring the, the legs wide apart, we're going to do a, um, uh, this forward bend instead with the use of the strap to help us and this will help stretch out the hamstrings which are, is connected um, to your pelvis so tight hamstrings can contribute to the problems in this area and it'll stretch out your lower back as well so it can be quite an intense stretch and if you've got uh, tight calves it can stretch them as well so um, again sitting up with that L shape that you had in staff pose and then you're going to Take a nice deep breath in as you lengthen your spine. And then as you exhale, just pulling gently on the strap to fold forward. Now, obviously, depending on how far into your pregnancy you are, you may not go that far forward. And just due to tightness in the hamstrings and the lower back, you may not go that far forward. That's really not important. What's important is what you are feeling. So if you've got tight hamstrings, you're going to feel it in the hamstrings. I mentioned the calves as well. You may feel it in the lower back and um, you don't want to feel pain but just a, a gentle stretch if you're getting deeper into it and you want to walk your hands down your strap go for it keep breathing here connecting with the breath is so important in yoga so with each inhale keep lifting that spine up out of the pelvis with each exhale even energetically even if you're not actually folding forward just thinking about that action of folding forward and on the next exhale just release your strap and release the pose okay so the next um pose we're going to do is a seated twist um you can do this on the on the floor if you want with your knees to one side but today I'm just going to do it on the ball because if you've got SPD, um, it's going to feel better to sit on the ball than on the floor. So, uh, on your ball or as I said, on the floor with your knees on one side and your feet to the other, we're just going to uh, look to one side and bring, so bring your right hand onto your left knee and just bring your left hand all the way behind as far as you can go on the ball. Keep that nice long spine and just imagine your spine like a spiraling staircase. Uh, so it's very gentle. You're not deeply twisting in the abdomen, lower body for obvious reasons. Just really opening up even into the upper back and just take two or three nice breaths here. And then to the other side. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, turn. So nice deep breaths. Really trying to feel the breath in um, uh, widening and expanding your rib cage as you inhale. Getting into any sticky, tight spots you might have there. It's very normal. To have a lot of tension around the ribs when you are pregnant everything is being pushed up into your diaphragm so it's not too surprising plus your posture is um being put under a lot of pressure your natural alignment 
with all the changes in your body. One more breath. And exhale. Okay, so this last pose is really, I would avoid it if you're in well into your um, third trimester, like maybe if you're a week or two in, um, it should be fine. But after that, I would avoid, avoid it. So maybe from like 30 weeks on. Um, it's a bridge pose. Fantastic for um, pelvic pain if you're in your second trimester. Also, um, uh, just when you're getting down on the floor, just be very careful. Uh, you don't want to uh, hurt your back or uh, you want to keep the pelvis nice and stable as you come down. So move as slowly as you need to move to get into position. So once you move slowly and gently and you're not doing anything, then it's, actually, it's good for you to be getting up and down, but you just have to be extra careful. Okay, so we're going to bring the feet out in front. They're about hip width distance apart and uh, the bum is a few inches away. Now you're going to lie on your back, but don't worry because you're not going to be there for very long. Uh, and you're just going to ease down whatever way is comfortable for you. Resting the bum, spine in neutral position. Let's take a breath here. Soften the jaw, soften the shoulders. And then when you're ready, as you exhale, press your feet down into the mat and gently begin to lift your hips and pelvis off the floor. Your chest will come closer to your chin, but move your chin back a little bit as well. And just lift up as far as you're comfortable going, so don't overdo it. And then as you exhale, slowly release back down. And you can just keep repeating that a few times. Inhale, lift. Keep the knees, hips, and ankles in one line. And exhale, release. So you really have to use your core to lift. So this is going to increase your um, core stability. It's uh, strengthening for the thighs, including the inner thighs, the glutes. If you feel comfortable, you can stay up in it for a few breaths. So the longer you stay in it, the more you start to feel the glute activation. But keep pressing the feet, especially the big toes into the mat and keep those knees aligned with the ankles and hips. And then if you're still holding, exhale and come down. Okay. And then from there, you can just very gently roll over onto your side. And we're gonna finish with a little bit of Shavasana. So relaxation, just to help the body and mind switch off. So um, in pregnancy, uh, you're gonna unless you're earlier in your first trim, uh, sorry, in your second trimester, maybe up to twenty something weeks, if you feel comfortable lying on your back with cushions under your knees, um, you can do that. Otherwise, you can uh, lie on your side with a cushion between your legs, with another one under your head or as much cushioning as you need under your head. Um, use any other cushions or support that you need to get comfy. And maybe even a blanket or cozy socks, whatever helps. And you're just gonna spend a few minutes, maybe even just up to five minutes here. Close your eyes, let your body become heavy. If you need to just fidget around a little bit to get comfortable do and once the video ends now you can just stay here for that five minutes or as long as you feel comfortable for just noticing your breath noticing your body with each inhale noticing the expansion and with each exhale just letting go